This is Mike with Tiny Life Big Mission, and uh, today we are doing a quick little video to show you kind of the inside of our bus, uh, what it looks like, and uh, how we've done the storage thus far. Uh, we're almost at the six month mark. Uh, this is today is May 5th, so happy Cinco de Mayo. And um, I think we hit our six month point on the 15th of this month. We thought it would be you know, a good place to check in and kind of show you where we're at with our organization and how we've kind of just adapted to uh, the bus. When we first moved in, um, we started to shoot some video, not for sure what we were gonna do with it. Most of it was just documenting things for ourselves and kind of, I don't know, going through the process of uh, sending it to family to kind of show them what we were doing and that kind of thing. We didn't have any idea that we'd be doing a YouTube channel or anything like that. Uh, we went back through and started looking at some of those different videos to try and use them for this. Uh, we quickly found that we did not shoot most of them with the phone in the horizontal position. Most everything was vertical. So we could either do a, a video that had a whole bunch of that vertical footage or just opt to not show it and uh, go through what we did have that was horizontal and show it. So when we moved into the RV, our original thought process for how our life path was going to go was more along the lines of sell the house, pay off debt, then we our only real expense would be cell phone insurance and uh, space rental for the RV. And with both of us still working for the next three to five years, we could bankroll a ton of money. And from there, take like a decade off and go do whatever we wanted, living on the savings that we had built. I'm not gonna go completely into the story of our calling yet, but um, suffice it to say, uh, God had a different plan for us. Now, his hand was involved in this, and I definitely think that uh, the way that we ended up with the RV and how fast it happened and the deal that we got, uh, everything was a, 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 I mean, you could just see God's hand in it. We, we bought the RV first because we went RV shopping one day and we found such a good deal. Like the, the dealership literally said, just make us an offer. And so I made them a ridiculous offer. Um, this was in September of 2020. Um, the RV that we got is a 2021. They had just gotten it on the lot and it matched the exact floor plan that we were shopping for. The inside aesthetic wasn't really what we were looking for, but it didn't bother us that much, so uh, when the guy asked me to make a deal, I just really lowballed it, and we came in with an incredible deal, and so we bought the RV there kind of on the spot. At that point, we needed to sell the house. The housing market was good. We could have afforded to probably just keep both, but we thought it would be more financially responsible to uh, sell the house and just live in the RV full time. So we put the house on the market, and there was a certain dollar amount that we were looking to get in order to be able to pay off the debt that we needed to pay off and be able to pay off the RV and kind of make the transition clean. We prayed over it and uh, amazingly, because at that point in time, we weren't really walking right with God. In fact, uh, you could barely call us walking with God. Um, but because of we both had a background in Christianity, we just prayed that, you know, hey God, please take care of us, kind of did the whole Christian uh Pinata prayer is what I call it, where you use prayer as a stick to whack God to get the stuff that you want to get. We did one of those kind of moves, and um, it actually um, came through really well in what we thought was in our favor. We got our way, but God actually had different plans for it. So it's interesting, and that, that story will unravel a little bit more as we go here. I'll show you some video um, of us moving in, then kind of how where we're at today. So enjoy. All right, so um, we are just here at the house and uh, decided we'd give you guys a little bit of an update on where we're at in our progress with um, scaling down things. Um, how do you feel like things are going so far? I think they're going well. They're just crazy and I can't wait for everything to be back in its place because right now there's like nothing in its place. But we're making a lot of progress, moving things that need to be moved, organizing things, and taking photos of things that we're selling, and talking about all the prices. So we're getting a lot done, and it's really good. 
this was very messy. Yeah, I would say, I don't know, I feel like our progress is really, really good. And this, I guess, would be advice that I would give people who are thinking about getting into this. Um, we, we've been planning for well over a year knowing we were going to downsize. We were thinking we were going to be three or four years off and we ended up being a year out um, just because of circumstances with the market and the economy and everything's good right now. So we wanted to get out while it was good. With that being said, we also are both minimalists prior to doing this. So we didn't have tons of possessions to begin with. The biggest pinch we've got right now is trying to sell everything all at once so yeah it's not like we're just moving a bunch of this stuff into a new place it's we have to get rid of everything and it's not like we could have just sold the house as is furnished with everything yeah so, so our biggest biggest chunk of work is trying to find people to take this stuff so and some of it you can't even give away so um uh, that would be my biggest my biggest advice to somebody who's thinking about doing this when you're potentially six months out, start bailing stuff fast. All right, hey guys. Hey. Uh, today is the big day where we're moving into the RV, so we're pretty exhausted. Uh, we had a seven hour drive to Oregon, got in at like two in the morning. It was icy, there was so much snow. Had to just crash for the night. We got stuck going up our driveway and then get to the cabin. In the morning, we had to dig out. There was over a foot of snow. Then we didn't get home last night until about nine o'clock. So both of us just exhausted from being on the road. We've got a load of stuff all, all the way, way to back. back. <laughs> it's like all of this building up to this point. Now we're exhausted. <laughs> So hopefully moving day goes quickly and well today and we can get everything moved into the rig and get the rig all hooked up. Should be interesting to see how it all kind of comes through today. Uh, we'll definitely keep you guys posted and uh, wish us luck. All right. So why don't we go inside and take a look at what it looks like in here. All right, this is where we normally obviously keep um, our boots. The property that we live at can tend to get pretty muddy when it gets into our rainy season. So we just kind of keep those stored there for easy access. Um, this here is a dehumidifier and having one of those little babies saves you so much in uh, having to wipe things down and worrying about water damage and that kind of thing. Uh, this is our garbage can. We've definitely got a cool little setup there. It took us a minute to find it, but it's a uh, combination garbage and recycling. So this is the dining area here. That's also where I do most of my work and YouTube stuff. Living room area. Uh, that's Mr. Winston over there. That's his little spot. He doesn't move from there very much. Uh, we Normally this chair sits back over here, uh, but we wanted that space for Caitlin's piano. Um, and the reason why I mention that is because when this chair is moved out of the way, this couch can actually open up and slide out and becomes a sectional here uh, with the recliner over in the corner. But because we wanted that space for the piano, we opted not to use the sectional and uh, just keep the recliner over there. It works pretty good. That's the kitchen space. We have a microwave convection oven combo and a gas range. Uh, the sink is actually a really good size sink. and that doesn't look like a lot of storage, but there is a ton of storage in there. The only thing that we really have lacking is a, a bit of counter space. I left this out just to kind of show the normal way of how we do things. Um, this is our dish drying rack. We don't have a dishwasher. Uh, this is a rack from the convection oven and we double it down and use it not only for cooking, but for drying dishes. We also have another one that's a shorter one that we keep in the sink. It's a great use of uh, dual purposing items in the house. And then this cutting board is one of our favorite items that we have. It was a wedding gift to us from Caitlin's brother. He actually made that thing by hand and it has been just one of the coolest presents somebody could offer somebody. So thank you, Sean. Okay, so going across the top here, most of this is just items that is normal kitchen items. We don't tend to host a ton, but when we do, we use paper cups and paper plates. It works a lot better. Um, 
That's some back storage for condiments and things like that. Some more spices that aren't kept in the window seal. Okay, down here we have silverware drawer. We have, this is a lot of just like kitchen gadgetry and measuring cups down here in the bottom. Underneath the kitchen sink, we hold our big pots back there and they're kind of stacked in there nicely. Our big uh, Instapot and then all the little cleaning products that you'd normally find underneath a kitchen sink. Underneath the stove, we keep our pots and pans and bakeware and our Tupperware and storage container area. Our knives being that Caitlin is a chef, knives really matter. Cooking utensils and things of that nature. And then storage. We do have a digital keypad that kind of tracks, you know, our tank systems and all that kind of stuff. As for the living room, um, you can see we've got a nice little setup here. In the morning times, we often run the little uh, electric fireplace. I'll show you some of the storage space that we use or how we utilized it up here. This is all the hoses and stuff for our central vac. This is kind of Kate's library of stuff. Um, she might get mad at me for showing you guys that, sorry. This is my little like electrical slash tool bucket. First thing of pantry, second thing of pantry, third thing of pantry, fourth thing of pantry. And this is a pantry slash cookbook combo. Uh, for underneath these, we have just a little bit of storage that we pull out. We house our board games. We are really into board games and play a lot of them. Um, this is what we could keep in the coach. Okay, so just off the living room is a guest bathroom. And just, you know, a nice little space here that you can uh, access so that people don't have to use the master bathroom. Um, this is our bedroom. We have a little TV that has some storage behind there that we normally just put like our video game console and DVDs and things like that. Um, the bathroom is back in there. And then this is our little bed. That thing sleeps so comfortably. Um, up here we have just some clothes storage stuff. That's our closets. This side is my side, this side is Caitlin's side, and we've managed to slim down all of our clothes to fit into there. Um, that's our hamper. That's her drawer of folded goods, my drawer of folded goods. That's an electrical switch panel, and that's just a box uh, or a drawer for storage. And the master bath, um, we kind of have this set up. It's uh, actually quite spacious. Down here we've got a ton of storage for um, all bathroom type needed items. Our personal effects stuff goes up here and then um, one of my favorite things, my son made that for me in a shop class that he had and uh, then the master shower and it's actually a pretty good sized shower. There is storage underneath the bed. We just keep kind of some back stuff, backlog stuff that we don't really I uh, need to access very often, but essentially that's what the uh, the old Casa de Day looks like. We do keep these little curtains out here to kind of give us a little sense of privacy and to make it so that when you're, I don't know, relaxing in here, you're not always looking at the cockpit and that kind of thing. So that's the inside of our home. Okay, starting with the passenger side of the bus. We use this back compartment for excess pantry goods, as well as our camp stove that's back there. That's what we use for grilling. So pantry goods there. We put some excess uh, shoes and things of that nature here, as well as in the pass-through, we keep our office supplies and some uh, art supplies and things like that. This is our propane tank. We keep like our lawn chairs and some outdoor exercise equipment. Um, this little guy that you see here, this little adapter there, that's called a extended stay. That is a very helpful piece. It allows us to be able to connect to a propane tank because of this is our propane tank and it is not detachable. As you can see, it's welded in. And so unless you take the whole RV in to get it filled up with propane, 
you don't have propane without that extended stay. Uh, this compartment is our excess water uh, storage. Then in this compartment, we have uh, backpacking gear and our outdoor recreational stuff, uh, fishing materials, things like that. This is kind of our travel. So we've got our backpacks and all of our camping and luggage and stuff like that. And then in this one, we keep a lot of the stuff that we need access to. So uh, this is actually a very ingenious thing, dog food. So it seals, keeps ants and rodents and things of that nature out of there. That's really nice. Our laundry stuff, mopping and that kind of thing. Okay, now on the driver's side, this is far back compartment. And again, some overflow of our pantry goods and some extra ex excess linens. In this one, we have our vacuum shop vac storage. This is the compartment for our generator that gives us um, power when we're not connected to shoreline. This is our water station. So we've got our black and gray tanks, everything in one spot there. This is my tool area. So I've got my air compressor and my toolboxes and ladder and some other various type uh, tools. Then this compartment is where our hard hydraulics are housed and uh, some extra utility blankets and things of that nature kept there. And this is our inverter box and kind of where all the main source of the powers go. All right, so that concludes the tour of the bus. Uh, the big points that I'd like to emphasize is, A, anybody can do this. This is not um, a difficult thing to do. If you decide that you want to reduce your lifestyle and make it simpler and be able to enjoy the things that you own more, you can definitely do this. Um, the biggest recommendations I would have for anybody who's choosing to go through this is decide early on what you want to, you know, we had three different sections of our house divided out between things that we wanted to sell, things that we wanted to keep and things that we wanted to um, get rid of. We started getting rid of stuff early, early on. We started selling stuff a little bit later than what we probably should have. We should have been selling stuff earlier than what we did. So a big recommendation is even when you think you might be a little ways out, once you've committed to the fact that you are going to do this, start selling stuff at that moment. So uh, get things sold, get things given away, get things moved out. And then the pile that you're uh, going to keep, be realistic with yourself on that. Uh, make sure that you do some measurements and check to what size your house is to where you can uh, not move in and have a whole bunch of stuff that you bring with you in storage. The point is to enjoy your living space and be able to to have everything that you own fit in that little area. Uh, there are a lot of rewards in it. So if you uh, enjoyed this video, please like it. If you uh, did not, I'm sorry, whatever. And uh, subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for new videos coming out soon. Thanks. I don't know how to, what to say there. Thanks, I'm still working on my sign off here, so. Uh, Stay tuned. Stay tuned. That was kind of stupid. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>